when people talk about LDL cholesterol on social media, usually they are medical doctors that take insurance and they have a license to protect, they prescribe drugs. And a lot of people who are talking about this subject are like out of practice, so they're not actually seeing patients, they're no longer clinicians. I'm gonna talk about LDL cholesterol. I'm a current clinician, I don't take insurance, and I don't have a specialty like cardiology, so I see a wide variety of, of patients. I don't prescribe drugs. I don't have to prescribe drugs because it, in order to preserve my license, I'm a chiropractor. I focus on nutrition now for, you know, 30 years. And I want to share some stories, some uh, five patients regarding diabetes and high cholesterol and eating a carnivore diet, low carb and fasting diet, and their LDL goes up or some lab goes up that freaks people out. And so the, I'm just going to jump right into it. So the first person, he has a uh, Lyme mold. He was in a, two moldy houses. Fungus, um, parasites, I put him on parasite supplements, and he got rid of um, many parasites, including one as long as his leg. And his main, um, one of his main symptoms is body convulsions and muscular fasciculation, so tremoring, um, it would wake him up at night. And his um, diet with me for le over a year now has been carnivore and fasting. I did a video with him, I published it on YouTube. And during that time, uh, eating a low carb uh, carnivore diet and then fasting, he then got a blood test. Normally his total cholesterol is between 180 to 200, but after the uh, fasting, his cholesterol was 682 and his LDL was so high that it went over uh, what they could measure at the lab, it was over 350. So, and I was kind of freaking out and he was kind of freaking out, his wife was freaking out. So he started eating vegetables and he brought his um, LDL and his total cholesterol back down again. But during this time in the last, I'm going to say six weeks, I've been studying a lot about LDL cholesterol and it's actually for the immune system. LDL cholesterol is for the immune system. It has nothing to do with forming placking in the heart, nothing to do with um, causing heart disease. LDL cholesterol is part of the immune system. It goes up when you have an infection to a virus, bacteria, a parasite. It, it also kills off precancerous cells and it binds endotoxins that are formed by bacteria inside the body. So those are five things in the scientific research that shows that um, LDL cholesterol is for the immune system. His main symptoms were here, pain, um, probably some kind of fungus in his brain. Um, it would go back here and drip down the back of his throat. He had problems in his ear. It hurt his heart. It was dripping down and went to his abdomen, all on the left side. So multiple locations of chronic organisms so I had him put a variety of supplements topically um, on his skin, such as this, for example. This is EE oil. It's very strong. And like here, inside the ear, down the throat, like on the outside right here. And then um, eat the low-carb diet and supplements for the immune system and supplements for detoxing, supplements to get parasites out of the body. He's been getting better and better. So the problem is that when he was carnivore, and then he fasted, and then he got his blood drawn while fasted. His LDL was so high. What does that mean? It means that that is the most important thing that he could possibly do for his immune system. And there's plenty of people who go on a ketogenic diet, carnivore diet, low-carb diet, and their LDL goes up a little bit. And people freak out. The doctors freak out. Because all throughout PubMed, it says over and over again, LDL causes heart disease. That is not a true statement. So what's the cause of heart disease? Certainly infections, certainly toxins. And I had mold in my history, was in a moldy office for a while, and one of my EKGs showed a possible myocardial infarction, heart attack. So in my case, it was the mold, probably the mycotoxins that are formed by mold. This guy's birthday is on Halloween. So every birthday, he eats candy. That's his, um, his uh, uh, decision. And so uh, a few weeks ago, we had Halloween. He ate some candy, and he felt bad, of course. He, he always felt bad. But he told me at his last visit, he feels better now, now than he has in five years. His health keeps progressing. And he recovered from the consumption of candy in two days. And his main symptom from the candy was um, inability to handle foods. He had reactivities to food, just, you know, food allergies and stuff. 
And after two days, the, rea the hyper reactions went away. But the point is, he's doing better now than ever before. And part of that has to do with carnivore diet and fasting and then the supplements. And uh, again, part of that is high LDL for the immune system. Now, I did a video on my YouTube channel. I post it right here, right now. And this video is about raising your LDL for better health. And when I posted this, people freaked out. And I still stand by my term, my words, that LDL does not cause heart disease. And when people get better, their health improves, the LDL goes up, so what? It doesn't mean that they're getting sick. Now, my next person I'm going to talk about, I got my notes right here. I did a video with her, posted that on YouTube, and her case is cancer. And in her uh, history, endometrial cancer with metastasis throughout the body, with cachexia, which means she's dying, she can't eat enough food, she keeps losing weight, and with ascites, which means her body is bloated with fluid and they had to drain her out. And that was about four years ago or so. And now all of her cancer is gone. And her main therapy to reverse this was eating raw eggs. And at first she was eating around, uh, I think it was 12 to 18 raw eggs a day. And now she's down to six raw eggs a day. And that's in the video. And you can see the interview. I'll post this right here. And during this time, I'm going to talk to you about her cholesterol, her LDL. In, in December of 2022, her LDL cholesterol was 308. And the normal range should be less than 99. And then this year, a year and a half later, her cholesterol actually was, her LDL was 265. Still very high, but they're not touching it with drugs. They're not trying to lower it in any way. She just is eating these animal fats and proteins and doing some fasting. Um, I don't know if it's intermittent fasting or what, but her she's getting better. All of her cancer is gone. So what if her LDL went to 308 and now it's 265? It may have gone up above 308, you know, three years ago. It could have been four, you know, 400, 500. Doesn't matter. She's better. She reversed her cancer with metastasis and cachexia and ascites. Nobody does this. She did it by eating raw eggs. So her cholesterol in December of 2022 was 402. A year and a half later, it was 369. She didn't take any statins. She has no heart disease. Now, if you're eating a high sugar diet, you're eating the standard American diet with pop and junk food and bread and pasta, and your cholesterol goes up like these, like the numbers I just told you, then you have to take the drugs that the doctors are giving you because the research shows benefit when you're on a junk food diet. When, a, when you're on a low carb diet, they're not needed. You gotta, you know, in the low carb diet, raise the LDL for your immune system so that your immune system can kill off the organisms that are causing the placking in the arteries around your heart or in the, you know, placking in other areas of your body. Another patient I have, this is my third case. She's got MS. She walks really slowly. Her muscles are uh, difficult to use. She uses a walker like this. And she's had MS for a long time. We ran her uh, blood panel and her LDL is 175. Again, it should be less than 99 according to standard medicine. And three years ago is 185. And her um, VLDL is below 19. Her VLDL currently is, 18, is at 18. Three years ago, is at 14. As long as your VLDL is less than 19, you're fine. Okay, so her cholesterol, total cholesterol, currently 244. And three years ago, it was 272. None of this matters because she's on a low-carb diet. She's been on this for a long time. Her triglycerides are 77. Three years ago, they uh, used to be 72. Those are very low. That's very good. She's not eating sugar, and you can tell this in her labs. Now, why would her LDL be so high? It's an infection. She's got some kind of an infection in her body causing harm and is probably messing up her muscles. So since she's been with me, now she's walking better. She's walking faster. Her muscles are stronger, and her brain is working better. And even her antagonistic son told her, Mom, your brain is working better. He gave her a compliment because everything is getting better. And I got her an antiparasitic supplement and she's pooping out worms. So her MS and her need for high LDL for her immune system, probably from parasites. Maybe she also has fungus, maybe other things, but we're cleaning her body up and she's getting better. And if her LDL stays very high at 175, I'm totally fine with that because it's fighting the infections. 
and now we're, we, she's on a program to help her body get better, and hopefully her immune system can eliminate all the organisms out of her body. Now keep in mind, it's the organisms that make biofilm, and then that biofilm turns into calcium, and I have research on this. That mechanism of the creation of placking, whether it's soft or hard, it's known. We know how it happens. Nobody talks about it, <laughs> actually, and how it works. And I'll, I'll do future videos about this, um, how this soft tissue and liquid, minerals, collagen, you know, these collagenous fibers, calcium phosphates, how they form into a plaque in the heart and arteries or maybe in the legs. We know how it's done. I just, nobody talks about it. And you need some organisms in there. You need some calcium in there. You need some, some um, dead tissue in there. And it all kind of coalesces as if you had, let's say you have a bucket of water and you pour some sawdust on there, on the top of that water real gently, the sawdust will accumulate and collect and it'll stick to itself and then it'll stick to the side of the bucket. That's like some kind of electromagnetic forces. And that's the same thing that happens that caused the placking in the heart and arteries. I got two more cases. So I have a patient, he's been with me um, for over six months. Well, initially he didn't use a, a glucose meter. He didn't want to stick his fingers and, and draw blood out of his finger because of the, because of the work that he does. So eventually he got a continuous glucose monitor on his arm and for uh, two weeks, his glucose was 130, it was too high. And it's been like that for like 15 years. And he had two stents put in his heart 10 years ago. And he had another stent put in his heart one year ago. And he's been on statin drugs for many years. Of course, they're not working and it, they're forcing the LDL down, but he's still got another stent put into his heart last year. Why is it that the uh, uh, statin drugs are not preventing his heart disease? Well, maybe it's his diet. Here's what we did. Low-carb ketogenic diet. He's showing ketones in the urine, so he's successful with that. He's losing fat. He's gaining muscle. He's working out at the gym, and everything should be going right. Well, with the continuous glucose monitor, it's still 130 after five months of doing all the right things. So I said to him, we're missing something. We're missing infection. You have an infection somewhere in your body and I didn't find it, you didn't find it, nobody's found it yet. And chances are it's probably in the mouth because they're usually in the jaw from a bad root canal or from a spot where you had a tooth pulled out. And he told me, yeah, I have pain right here. I said, oh really, what's that? Well, it's a problem I need to see a dentist. I said, go get a comb beam a 3D x-ray, scan that, and see if you have an infection in your jaw. Well, before he was able to go do that, he had pain there so badly, he made an appointment with a dentist. By the time he got to the dentist, it's oozing pus. The dentist drills a hole in that tooth, and it oozes pus for 20 minutes. He's had that infection for years, maybe 15 years or more, and that's why his heart plugged up in three locations, and that's why it's not diet it's not statin drugs. It's not exercise. You know, it's not ketosis. It's an infection. And I've talked about this for like a number of years now, but it, you know, this is a real case. So he had that treated. Um, he should have had a pull, but he didn't. He had it treated. And um, I haven't seen him since. Uh, he'll be back, but we'll see if his blood glucose comes down. This is logical. It makes sense that this is what's happening for him. My last case is a person who has uh, type 2 diabetes, managed with diet um, in ketosis, and his blood sugar would be up to 160 and down to 112, um, rarely ever below 100, although he's had his moments. And he was with me for six months. He's still with me as a, as a patient. And at one point, his blood glucose was averaging um, around 114, and he monitors it daily, multiple times a day, and his machine tracks the records. So I saw him, I was ta I'm talking to him every two months now. And so, so last time I talked to him, he said, for some reason now, my blood glucose is averaging 140 instead of 114. And he goes, I don't know why. Oh, wait a minute, I know why. Because I'm going to Starbucks twice a day and I have a latte. No sugar, no syrup, just the milk. Maybe this much milk per day. That milk makes his blood glucose average from 114 go up to 140. 
Why? Why does dairy do that? Because dairy, just like sugar, feeds infection. What is the infection? For him, maybe it's a tooth issue, maybe it's a toenail fungus, maybe it's a parasite, but in his case, I put him on binders. These are supplements that detoxify metals and chemicals out of his body, and he started taking them, and he got a mustard yellow coating on his tongue that came and went. What is a mustard yellow coating on the tongue? What is a white coating on the tongue? What is a brown coating on the tongue? What is a black coating on the tongue? It's fungus. It's candida. Now, you can have a different color coating on your tongue from coffee or cigarettes, but he doesn't do that. Well, I mean, he's got the coffee, but it was mustard yellow. So he's got a candida issue in his body, and he's getting rid of it by taking these binders. The binders, like I said, get rid of metals and chemicals. Well, what a fungus Fungus loves, candida loves metals and chemicals because metals, metals and chemicals destroy tissue and fungus grows on dead tissue. So over the course of a long period of time, as he's detoxing his body, the candida is going to go away and then he can be able to handle milk better and then he can keep his blood glucose stably down. He has had it down to 85 before, but to, for it to spike up back up to 140, you know, 160, there's incredible instability there. And that's what people do when they have diabetes sometimes, it's unstable. And they're taking metformin and they're taking insulin and they're doing all these drugs without ever getting to the cause. And in that case, maybe it's candida. In my next few videos, I'm gonna talk about um, these concepts that I find in PubMed of what I just went over. These patients are real world experiences where people have infection in their body causing heart disease and diabetes. And I have, I spent a lot of time on PubMed finding out that diabetes and heart disease is infection. And when you eat junk food, like everybody does, they gain weight and they destroy their tissue on the inside. Organisms come in and they eat the dead tissue. They thrive. And then as a result of that, blood glucose goes up, triglycerides go up, cholesterol, LDL goes up, HDL goes down, insulin goes up. These are all side effects of infection. And I'm trying to disprove this. I'm trying to, you know, make this wrong. But of course, the original cause being the diet or the original cause being an infection in the tooth or the original cause being parasites. There's some kind of an organism making cardiologists think that a person has, you know, high cholesterol due to heart disease or an endocrinologist saying, oh, this person has high insulin, therefore they have diabetes. But what's the cause? It's an infection caused by a bad diet or bad tooth or something. So this, this is my new thought process. When somebody comes in and they're like, hey, I have high blood glucose, high insulin, high A1C, and we change your diet, they're in ketosis, and it resolves it. They just killed off all these organisms because they eat a bunch of meat, and the meat repairs tissue, it makes the immune system stronger, and it kills off whatever organism was inside their gut or inside their sinuses or wherever they hide out. So these are bigger thoughts, and I'm doing this because I have to get my patients well. I don't do, use drugs. I use diet and supplements, and that's it. And there's people doing all the right things to get rid of their diabetes, their high blood glucose, for example, and, and they don't get better. And it's like, what am I missing? Okay, it's an infection somewhere. And I don't treat infections. That's my disclaimer. I help the body heal. I give supplements to repair tissue. And when you repair the immune system, great things happen. I give supplements that detox, that clean out biofilm, that clean out um, toxins made by organisms. If you want to treat your infection, go see an MD. They got antibiotics, antivirals, but then you got to repair your tissue. Then you got to do drainage to make sure your liver, gallbladder, kidneys, lymphatic system are working well. You got to make sure your diet's right. There's too many factors. You can't just take an antibiotic every day for a year. And I created the seven step blueprint to optimal health to walk people through this whole system of repairing your body, getting your health back. I've had people who had devastating health problems, whether it's from a moldy house or um, chronic uh, exposures from like swimming in a pond and getting parasites, you know, too many infections, et cetera, et cetera. And they go to the med they all have medical doctors. They all see the medical doctors. They've all done all the drugs and it's like, they're still the same. It's, you have to improve health instead of always trying to fight the symptoms or you know fight the bad things. You have to improve health. 
and that's how you get your health back.